Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome to another Thursday with Spencer here on FTM Transtastic and don't say it, I know it looks like I have a landing strip on my damn head. Ugh. Honestly, I have not been having the best of weeks. This week, it's been horrifying, to say the least. My credit card and debit card information was stolen, and somebody took $1,500 out of my credit card. And $900 from my debit card, and $100 from my savings. I have rent due tomorrow, so this is going to be just great. It's just, ugh, gosh, it's just, it's just been grand. But... This week, we are talking about vulnerability. But, uh, vulnerability, uh, Spencer is not vulnerable. No, not at all. Ever. If you meet me in person, you would know that I'm a pretty reserved and I'm a pretty stoic individual. True soldier through and through. I don't talk about emotions. I don't talk about feelings. I actually very seldom ever use feeling words. Um, it may come to you as a shock, but if you ever dated me, you would know that whenever I'm describing my anxiety or feelings or anything, I always paint a picture for you. But anyways, vulnerability. So I think that it shows that you are emotionally mature if you're able to be vulnerable with yourself and with people. I, however, am an emotional child. So I am not vulnerable at all. I don't like, I don't like letting people in on the mess. And... I typically tell people when I'm having a problem or issue or concern or whatever after I've already solved that problem, issue, or concern. So nine times out of ten, people think that either A, I don't trust them, or B, I make decisions like very whimsically or spontaneously, etc. So let's take the don't trusting part first. What happens is when you start to build relationships with people, whether it's a friendship or an um, intimate relationship, etc., they start opening up to you and they start being vulnerable with you, and they start unraveling before you. And it's only natural for them to assume that you would give them the same, you know, trust. And with me, I love all my friends and all of my partners very much. However, I do not open up to them. Or if I do, it's after the fact. So one of the biggest complaints I get when people date me is like, why couldn't we work through this problem together? What happens is I will have a problem, I will be mad about it, I'll figure it out, and then I, like a week later I'd be like, by the way, I was super stressed because work sucks. And they just are like, what? What? Yeah, so it creates this idea of you always having your shit together when that's not true. And I have a lot of things running through my, my mind all the time and I get anxious, and I get sad, and I get mad, and I get angry. However, I never show these feelings, and I never show anyone, so even when I am truly struggling, most people don't know to ask because I always look like this. When in, So in that situation, I need to be better at telling people what I need, when I need it, and it, telling people how I feel. I, I personally will work on that, and um, I've always been this way. A lot of people say like tea has made them unemotional or less emotional. That's not the case for me. I've just never really been the emotional kind of human. So um, yeah, I I need to work on that. And it kind of, it's it causes problems. It causes problems within my like dating life, for real. Now the second kind, the kind where people think I'm being spontaneous is best described when I came out to my parents as trans. So. What happened was I came out in January of 2015 and I started testosterone in March of 2015. However, leading up to that, I didn't have your typical stere or your stereotypical like trans experience, right? Um, I went to a private school where I had to wear a skirt every day of my life and I didn't complain about that. I was prom queen and I didn't complain about that. I dated guys. I wasn't super uber feminine, but like was feminine and I didn't complain about it. Um, my parents had no idea that I ever felt any type of way about anything, ever. My parents didn't even know I dated women until after the military, which is when I got out in May of 2015. It was a struggle. Um, and it was a shock to them. And they, when I came out to them, they were like, what the fuck, no. They were like, this is a fad, this is a trend, this is wrong, you've been this very, not girly, but this feminine human 
for so long and never had a problem with it, there's no way you can be trans. What they didn't know is about a year and a half before I came out, I was seeing a gender therapist and I have dated women since I was 17 and I have been experiencing all these like dysphoria and other things. I just didn't tell them about it because the dating, the sexuality part, mostly because I all I ever wanted to do was be in the Air Force and I enjoyed, I enlisted when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still in effect. So I didn't tell anybody I was gay because I didn't want to be dishonorably discharged. So that's where that came on. But like the gender stuff, I was just like, I feel some type of way, let me fix it. And I did my own research and went to my own therapist and did my own stuff and fixed it. And so to them, it was all of a sudden, you know, their beautiful baby girl comes home from the Air Force and now is a guy. Like that's what they, that's literally what they thought. They were like, the Air Force made me a guy, which is hilarious. But you know, I understand where they're coming from because they only had the three months, right? Well, actually, you know, I came out in January, so that was when they should have respected me and my pronouns, but three months until I medically transitioned where I was dealing with this for a year and a half. And a lot of my decision-making is off of that. So I will come, I say this to my roommate all the time, hey, I'm getting a tattoo today. And they're just like, of what? How did you put any thought into this? And I'm like, actually, I've been wanting a tattoo for like three months. I just haven't said anything. And obviously that's not as serious or important because it's just a tattoo, but you get what I'm saying. I just don't let people in on the mess. I don't let people in on the decision process. I just don't let people in at all. And uh, it's not, it's not great. You know, sometimes I'd like a little helping hand when it comes to the hard problems and the difficult decisions. And Sometimes I just would like people to join me on the journey, just come along every step of the way. So my challenge to myself is to be more open and more honest and more vulnerable. Um, it's a difficult space to be, it's, a, it's hard to be, but you know, like I said, I think it shows your maturity if you're able to be vulnerable um, with yourself and with other people. And we're all just trying to progress in this life, or at least I am. So leave in the comments below if you've ever had a horrifying experience with your hair like I'm having and I know I know it's not that bad but it's it's bad like it's it's like the I like people aren't gonna take me seriously like not that they took me seriously with the mohawk but they're not gonna take me seriously with this you know what I mean anyways leave in the comments below how you feel I hope you're having a great week and an even better weekend it is Thursday it is Spencer until next time